I've been talking quite a bit about retro programming recently, programming for text-based uh, command line applications, if you like. And one of the programming languages I've been using is Object Pascal in the Lazarus IDE, which you can see here. If you're not interested in Object Pascal, don't turn off yet because this uh, lesson today, this video, is going to be about more than that. It's about how to develop new features in a complicated application without messing it all up. It's an approach to developing incrementally. So uh, Pascal is a great language for both Windows and cross-platform programming. I use it on Windows and on my Raspberry Pi using Linux, but there's more to it than that. And I'm going to talk about programming approaches in generally. Before going on, if you want to know more about Ob Object Pascal, uh, I have this book. Um, little Book of Delphi, which you can buy on Amazon. Uh, it also covers Object Pascal for Lazarus. It's the same, essentially the same language. And I'm also be going to be talking about pointers. Now I've got this other book, The Little Book of Pointers, that's mainly about C pointers. And the syntax in Pascal for pointers is different. The techniques are the same, broadly speaking. So if you want to know more about Object Pascal in general or pointers, Specifically, you can get those books in paperback or on Kindle. Without more ado, let's have a look at what I've been doing. Now, I started an adventure game in Pascal. This is an exploring style adventure game where there's a map of connected rooms and uh, you can move from room to room and pick up treasures. I've got a huge series all about adventure game programming on YouTube and I do another book if you want to buy one but there's quite a, a detailed series that you can follow on YouTube. That one talks about C Sharp and Java. Now in this game I've taken the somewhat eccentric approach of writing in procedural, that is traditional, non-object oriented Pascal. This language does support object orientation. I've decided it would be quite interesting to see how far I can get without objects. Because in most adventure games, and most I've talked about before, I have a line of descent of objects from a treasure or a thing object with a name and a description, then a treasure object, which might have a value, a room object, which descends also from uh, a thing or a container. Anyway, a whole tree-like structure. And I've explained in another video how you can create the same sort of uh, hierarchy without using objects. But I've got a problem with object-oriented uh, Delphi or Object Pascal or C Sharp or Java. The class library prov provides me with a whole load of ready-to-use list types. So I could have uh, array lists or generic lists or dictionaries or hashes, various types of list. Now, in this old, older form, non-object-oriented Pascal, I've got to do the list myself. That gave me a problem. Do I go the easy route and just create arrays of objects so each room can have an array of so many treasures? Um, or do I go, go the slightly more difficult route and create my own list structure using pointers to point from one element to the next? I started off, well, with the easy way. Let's see how far I could get with an array. So I just created arrays of up to 10 objects. In theory, it could be 100 objects, 200, whatever you want. Uh, that's the maximum number of objects a room could contain. And initialized them. You can see the code here and wrote various functions, utility functions to count the objects. And here I init, uh, I create the objects and add them to a treasures array. So this is not my main adventure game. I'm just doing a little test a separate project to test if arrays are going to be suitable at this point. Show the objects in the array and then transfer an object from one array to another. Now this is where I started to realize that arrays weren't a very good choice because if I if the adventure if the player goes into a room say and picks up an object that might be the fifth object in an array of 10 objects. So I've now got a gap in that array. So if I then want to display objects or if I want to add and move objects to and from that array, I've got to deal with that gap. Do I you know, put a, the new object, the, the object the player's dropped in that room in that gap, in which case I have to calculate, cal um, I have to count along the array to calculate where the gap is. 
and or I could every time I remove an object from an array I could shift uh, which is what I've tried to do here I've, I, I could shift the elements uh, that are left after the gap in the array I could shift them one along so that the array is packed again and all the empty elements are well, starting to become messy I'll just show you quickly the the code here I quickly decided this was not a good approach so I wrote a second uh, project to try and see how far I would get with linked lists. Now, the important thing, as I was saying earlier, this is partly, this video is partly about how to develop new features for existing projects. I have an existing adventure game project in development, uh, procedural Pascal one here, it could be whatever language you're using, C, Java, Python, whatever. Uh, but I didn't want to mess it up. If I put in all that stuff about arrays, I would have lots of references, lots of you know bits of code referring to those methods, to those functions to deal with the array. And now I've decided, no, I don't really want to use arrays after all. So I've messed up my project. So that's why I've done my test projects to test out these different approaches uh, before I copy the code or move the code into my bigger project. So this is my linked list test. Now here's my record. A record is the procedural equivalent of, or the nearest I can have to uh, an, an object, as in an object-oriented uh, game. And uh, you can see that my game object includes a thing object. It doesn't descend from it, it includes it. I'll explain this in other videos. Now this is where I start using pointers. I declare a node that is some little uh, pointer element that has a pointer to another node. So a node is actually a record that contains a game object plus a pointer called next to the next node, the next uh, node object in a list. And then I've created two uh, linked list uh, structures, treasures and inventory. So these in, in a full adventure game, each room would have its own list of treasures. There might be hundreds of rooms, each of which had a list of treasures. Inventory is the list that's owned by the player. Moving from room to room, you can pick up treasures, take it from the treasures list of that room, add it to the inventory, and when you drop it, you do the reverse. Uh, here's my obinit. So I'm not going to explain this in great detail, all the pointers operations. Um, it just take too long and you can... You know, you can find it in my book explaining all about pointers uh, or you can find online information about how to create linked lists. But here I just want to show you the approach I've taken in testing this. So this is my code to add the node to a list. So it takes a, a list object up here, which is of the P node, which I showed you. That's this, uh, this thing up here. It's a pointer to a node. Uh, so it takes that list and a game object and it just adds it to the list. Now you can see here, I've had to create a new node here. And then this little character, that's the uh, Pascal equivalent. It's the indirection um, operator. It's the Pascal equivalent you see in, in C and C-like languages of an asterisk or a star it's, it's called. And so I'm just wiring up the, the lists and then I return the, uh, sorry, I, I then, I, this is a procedure, it doesn't return a value, but it uh, it actually modifies the list by making the list, uh, assigning new node to the list. So var here means that's a reference. It's been passed by reference to the list, uh, to the procedure. Uh, yeah, I'm, as I say, I'm going very rapidly through this. If you can, want to write the code yourself, just pause the video and you can see what I'm doing. I've got lots and lots of comments. So transfer the node from one list to the other list. That would be, that would happen if the player takes uh, an object or drops an object. So in, if it's a, uh, taking an object, the from list would be the treasures in the room. The to list would be the player's inventory. If it's dropping an object, the from list would be the inventory and the to list would be one of the treasure lists in the room. So I just 
go along the, the, the lists and I find the object to move and I remove it from one list, make the uh, pointer point to the element uh, beyond the one that's being removed in the list. So I, I've recreated the link in the list. I don't end up with a pointer pointing to nowhere and so on. So then I print the list, that's just displaying the list. And then there's a whole lot of code down here just to test it. So I'll just show you uh, the code running. So here's the, the, the test. So it just displays the treasures that are there. And finally, I've created this other project, uh, which has a bit more uh, testing in it. This, this time, uh, for example, uh, it, if it cannot find uh, a ring in the treasure list, then I get an error message. Uh, so I'll just sh quickly run down the uh, code here so you can see exactly what I've done. Uh, it's very similar to the previous code. So really what I'm trying to get across is that when you are developing a big project, you need to, any, any experimental code, you need to test that out in a separate project as I have here with my array and linked list uh, test projects before you weld it in to your bigger project. Okay, so that's been a very, very short look at how I've dealt with this particular problem. As I say, if you're unfamiliar with uh, Pascal pointers, well, you can pause the, the video at many points. I show all my code. The, the key thing to remember is really that this is the indirection or dereferencing operator, whereas if you are used to C, you will be used to seeing the asterisk. I'll be moving on to looking at more retro style programming shortly, programs that can be run from the command line on Linux or on Windows. If that's something of interest, I hope I'll see you again soon.